thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Um, as you are aware from this on-screen shot, you are in our Sage Partner Cloud webinar, where you are able to learn how to access Sage 100 from anywhere. With you today is myself, Kimberly Tucker. I'm the Director of Marketing here at DSD, and you've received several emails inviting you to this webinar. So I'm your host to monitor the chat box for any questions you may have, um, as well as you know, feel free to you know, request anything via email from the marketing inbox or myself, which you should have a couple emails from us. So if you have any needs throughout the event, please feel free to use any method of communication and I will be your point of contact. With us, we also have Jim Woodhead, who's a principal SAGE consultant on the practice here. He has several decades of SAGE experience, so we're super happy to have his tenure here. And then also our SAGE Director of Consulting, Eric Anderson, is with us today. They have been instrumental in developing this concept across the practice and made DSD a leader in the space. So we're super happy to have them discuss all of the reasons the cloud matters, the SAGE Partner Cloud Overview as a whole. Um, going over some frequently asked questions that we've received from the channel and we had ourselves. And then the live demo will happen as well. And we will wrap up today with an interactive Q&A from yourselves to our experts here. So we really want to make this very interactive. So please, again, feel free to use the chat or the questions box. And um, yeah, we're, we're excited to get started. So Eric, do you want to review DSD? Yeah, so so this slide is uh, fairly self-explanatory. We've been we've been around a while. We've been doing this a lot. I think between Jim and I, we've probably got 45, 50 years of Sage experience uh, alone. But a lot of businesses served, and a lot of custom implementations. We obviously we have a development part department. We also do custom office within Sage 100 scripting and those types of things. Uh, founded in 1984, and I think uh, we've won some awards. We've been part of uh, top VARs and, and those those types of things. So yeah, I think we can move on, Kimberly. So recently, um, well, this has kind of been going on for a couple of years, but uh, recently there was a webinar where Sage announced that we DSD does have the most migrations to Sage Partner Cloud. So we just wanted to point that out, that we've been doing a lot of migrations to Sage Partner Cloud. And then what, so this slide is about why does cloud matter? I think most of you on the call are probably familiar with what this means and why cloud matters, but a lot of data has been generated recently. And um, as far as hosting that data and managing that data, cloud solutions offer a little bit more flexibility and, and access to that data. Um, there's compliance issues, there's security issues, there's cost uh, analysis and, and where it makes sense to um, save costs by moving to the cloud. And then with, with COVID and in the pandemic and things like that, we have remote workforces and people just wanna be able to access their applications and their data from, from anywhere. So those are some just high level talking points about um, cloud. And now we'll jump into actually Sage Partner Cloud. And I'm, I'm gonna try to move quickly through this. I, I've been on the other side of a lot of these and I realize you wanna get to the demo and, and, and uh, actually see it in action, but it is helpful to understand this at a high level. You know, what is Sage Partner Cloud? How does it work? So Sage Partner Cloud, and I, we use the acronym SPC a lot, is it's basically your Sage 100 application installed on a Microsoft Azure virtual machine. So SPC, um, again, is we take, we take your Sage 100 data, we migrate it, it's similar to an upgrade. Let's say you're on version 2020 and you wanna move to 2022 or 2023. So as part of that upgrade process, just as if you were moving to another server you know, on-prem, we just move it up to a cloud server that's sitting in, in Microsoft Azure. So the, the difference is, and we have direct access to that server, um, the server has been optimized to run Sage 100, and the client, the, you, the, the people using Sage 100, you've got one throat to choke for the hosting and the Sage 100 support and services, and that throat is our, our throat. So 
um, no middleman and, and it's easy for us to manage and get everything configured and, and work with your um, upgrade and your migration to Sage Partner Cloud. And we'll talk a little bit about benefits. A couple of these we'll get into on, we'll get a little bit more granular with some other slides, but time savings is, is a big one. One nice thing is that as part of the Sage uh, Partner Cloud process, Sage provisions the virtual machine. So they, they're actually helping to configure, configure that Azure virtual machine. It typically just takes a couple of hours and then we can just dive into the, into the project, whether that's just a migration of the same version to the same version or whether that's an upgrade. And then the other one we'll just point out is cost effectiveness. So this is not a new ERP implementation. It's just like an upgrade or a migration to another server. So there's a huge cost savings when compared to moving to a completely different ERP application. And then of course, security and flexibility, which we'll, we'll address a little bit more on some future slides. So the, the backup, we assign every virtual machine this backup policy. Um, so we have daily backups, weekly backups, monthly backups, yearly backups. And it's geo redundant, meaning if the entire um, Azure center goes down in one region, there's backups re re retained in the other geographic locations. So kind of a geo redundant uh, platform and we can restore either the entire server image from a backup or if you you know call us and say, oh my gosh, someone deleted a, actually deleted a file or made a mistake and we need to just restore this one Sage 100 company folder or this one file, Azure has a nice um, restore process where we can just get to those specific files or, or folders as well. So it's nice just knowing, I mean, we used to, <laughs> It was it was a common question when we worked with IT firms is, do you have a backup? Have you actually tried to restore from it? Because a lot of times we think backups are happening, but maybe when we when we when stuff happens and we have to restore, it doesn't work so well. So um, with Microsoft Azure, that's all handled. And we'll go on to security. I So this is uh, <laughs> it's. Microsoft's a big company. They spend more than a billion dollars every year on security. Um, you know, we we often actually get pushback from from clients talking about security and how do I know it's secure? And that's that's actually one of the biggest selling points with moving to SPC is the security within Microsoft Azure. And over the past year or two, I think we've had at least five customers come to us and they are completely shut down by ransomware. They cannot access their data. They can't run the application. And typically what happens is they have to pay a large fee that, that could be tens of thousands of dollars. I think we've seen it up to 80 or $100,000 just to get access to their data again. So that's uh, something to be aware of. Um, the majority of those customers that have come to us in, in that situation, we've been able to move over to, to Sage Partner Cloud and give them a little peace of mind that that's not gonna happen again inside of the Microsoft Azure environment. And next we'll talk about how do I run Sage 100? So this is the best part and Jim's gonna demonstrate this. That it's just gonna look and feel exactly like it does now. It's, uh, I would say 95% of our of the customer users are running it as a, as a desktop app. So you have a little icon on your desktop, you open it up and it just looks and feels like Sage 100. Uh, there is a browser mode as well. So if you if you are not running a Windows machine, let's say you're running a Mac, you can still run Sage 100 in, in a browser mode. So we'll see that in just a minute here. And let's go to the next slide. Um, so the, the one thing you do want to make sure before you know we move to Sage Partner Cloud is, is you have to have the internet bandwidth to effectively pass data back and forth. So this link, the cloud ping test, that just takes you to a, basically a speed test to access the Azure uh, regions. And the two that we currently work with are West uh, US2 and then US East. And uh, you know, depending on where your your uh, main operations are located, we can set you up and you know we can set the virtual machine in either of those Azure regions. In general, anything under 300 milliseconds is great, and it's not really noticeable to the to the human eye, is what I've been told. So, 
if it's coming in at 100 or 200 or you know under 300 it's going to again look and feel like the servers right there on prem shouldn't be any major delays okay what if i need to add more users or server resources uh, so this is another great thing about Microsoft Azure and virtual machines. It just takes minutes for us to increase memory or, you know, CPUs or hard drives. It's, it's again, one of the great things about a virtual machine is it's very easy to adjust um, and scale that server up or down based on your needs at any current time. So if more resources are needed, a change can be made almost immediately. And let's talk about um, the long-term business tr strategy. So a lot of this comes down to, I think, flexibility. And there's a, a few key items. One is accessibility. So employees accessing Sage 100 from anywhere. Scalability, which we just talked to about the ease of, of scaling a virtual machine. And let's see, we just switched the slide there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, and then adaptability. Be, because it's it's Sage 100 on a virtual machine and your consultant is going to have, your you know, your Sage 100 partner and consultant is going to have complete access to that. It's very adaptable as far as adding modules, um, you know, custom office stuff, enhancements. It's easy for us to, to get in and add those things. So um, I, in general, I think the long-term business strategy, it's just flexibility and agility, like it, like it says on the slide there. Okay, and here's a few specific ex examples of customers that have made the switch. Leslie and Campbell, Campbell is a commercial roofing contractor in Washington. Um, they're actually hosting Sage 100 and Sage HRMS. So just do want to point out that you can run different applications, including Sage HRMS, and Sage Fixed Assets um, in conjunction with Sage 100 inside of Sage Partner Cloud. So that's kind of a nice uh, additional um, point that, that we want to make you aware of. And then I'm going to piggyback on that and switch over to Davis because D Davis, they're also running um, Sage Intelligence. And so they've got multiple companies. They're running consolidated reports inside of Sage 100 on Sage Partner Cloud. Uh, their reason to move was they've got multiple locations. Um, they really had uh, the, the owners really wanted to move to the cloud. There was, um, you know, some some cost analysis and things like that. So, and then Drexel Supply in the middle, um, they were one of their pushing points to move to the cloud was security. They they you know didn't feel like their server on prem was as secure as it could be. Um, they're a steel grading contractor in Colorado. And they've been, I think, one of our, our longer term clients. So it's probably been a, a couple of years now. And let's see, what do we have next? Okay, so now we'll move into the live demo and pass it over to Jim Woodhead. Hello, everyone. Welcome, uh, welcome to our little demonstration here. Uh, you guys can see my screen? Yep. So what what we do with sage uh, partner cloud is we we more or less want it to look and feel just like what you have right now so we'll add an icon onto your system so you'll click on that icon and it will actually open up the the website this is sage 100 na.sagepartnercloud.com and if you're not logged in and i'm already logged in i'm going to log out here uh if you're not logged in you're going to come up and you're it's going to ask you for your email and your password now, what happens here is Sage is running a secure backend with Sage ID. And when you first get signed up with uh, Sage Partner Cloud, we'll send out all your users an email to sign up with the Sage ID. They'll get their Sage ID. And then at that point, they'll log in. Now, the other thing you can do with this is you can turn on multi-factor multi authentication, or MFA is a, the term we use a lot right now. And when you log in, it will actually ping you and, and ask you to uh, log in with your phone number uh, or text you, that type of thing. That's something you can turn on. A lot of people like that, that opportunity to do that. So once we log in, uh, it knows who you are and it will come in and you'll, you will be set 
put into this website right here. Now, if you did have multiple companies, it would show up under here. Uh, and this is also where you can go to Windows and browser mode. Now you might notice, or maybe not, that we are in Microsoft Edge. Uh, Sage Partner Cloud is designed to work in, in uh, Microsoft Edge. It gives the best environment and allows us to run in what we call Windows mode. And uh, Windows mode allows you to run it as what we call in the business a published app. So as we start up, you will see the icons come across for all your different screens. If you want to run it in uh, Chrome or um, Safari, if you're on a Macintosh, then you'll have to switch over to browser mode. Um, that just brings up a one screen and everything happens in that one screen. So most of our users love Windows mode and they get into it. Now you get two options here for right here. One is opens up Sage, uh, the Sage 100. The other one opens up a, a data drive. Um, and if you have other applications, we can add other icons up here, like for HRMS or FAS or Excel or different things you can run those on, on the server. So I'm just gonna click on Sage 100. It's gonna go out there. It's gonna ask us if we wanna open it up and it runs just a normal RDP session. Uh, you can hide some of these screens so you don't see them all the time. And it opens up, logs out, and what it's doing right now is it's communicating to the server. Now behind the scenes, uh, if you were to click this uh, details here, you're gonna see this screen showing up behind the screen, but you don't norm you normally won't see that. That's all hidden and st starts up and you're logging into the server. Um, and it will pop up here in a second once it gets communicated and it'll start up Sage 100 and it will open up your screen. Now, one of the nice things about this is when we migrate this over from your existing system, we can migrate it all over. So if you guys are used to certain things, uh, all the different menus, that type of thing, you can run this in, in all the different uh, functions, but you have this, you have your uh, web content over here, uh, you have your modules. We support all the different modules in Sage 100. So you can go to, for example, General Ledger, opens up the date and it works and feels just like Sage. And I'll notice I'm in account maintenance and that now it's opened up another screen down here. I can go here, I can do my lookups, uh, pull up codes. If the other thing is nice is we recommend that you have an Office 365 license. When you have that Office 365, then you have the capability to uh, kick things out to Excel. So you can click and you have your same function that you'd have in your office it will open up in Excel right here. Now this is running in Excel on, on the server and um, uh, you can save it down to your local drive or you can, you can just run it on the server. So let's get back to, uh, oh, nice little messages there. So let's get back to uh, Sage here. So you can go into uh, your accounts payable, vendor, you have all the same drill around, all the different capabilities that you have in a normal system that you have. When you do printing, uh, printing has a couple different uh, ways that we can do printing. Um, if you want, you it will use, in regular Windows mode, it will bring uh, redirected printers over. Uh, we have some customers that, that like some additional speed and we recommend that uh, if you're running, uh, dependent upon where you're at in your system, sometimes we'll recommend that you uh, run a program called TS Print. And that gets rid of the redirected printers and actually allows you to go direct to printer. So uh, you might, if we uh, ever do a demo for you, you might notice we might talk around TS Print. It's a wonderful program for um, terminal servers. So a um, couple other things that we have the capability to do in here is we run Sage Intelligence. So if you are a company that runs Sage Intelligence, uh, you can come into here and it will run Sage Intelligence for all of your users. So you have the capability to use it across all of your different, uh, all your different things and you have full capability to do any type of items that you might want to do for um, Sage Intelligence and it runs in, runs in Excel. So as I said, you have all the modules available um, and uh, have all the capabilities that you normally have. You set your favorites. Uh, 
One a couple of cool things is, you know, if you want to set up uh, websites, you can set up websites. For example, Wells, if you're Wells Fargo, you can have your websites up here, and all these will stick around, and you won't you won't need to do much on your local machine. Um, if you uh, need to, um, we also have a um, this data drive. So what is the data drive? Data drive is kind of like a Windows Explorer. So when you open up the data drive, it allows you to open up and it opens up a screen, allows you to bring data back and forth to your uh, to your system. Uh, we have a we have a product in at DSD called Instadocs that we love because uh, it allows you to have um, your document management. So with Instadocs, we have the capability to be able to drag and drop inside here. So you can drop files from your local drive onto the onto the server. So if you're not using a, Instadocs is a great program to add onto your uh, onto your system, but we fully support that. Um, but if you you when you log in and you see this, you will see the server, which is the E drive and the C drive, and you also see your local drive, so you can access stuff in your local drive. Um, now you don't necessarily have the whole drive in memory, so a lot of times I'll recommend that you put a um, a folder out here for all the SBC transfer, and then you can just jump into that and use that folder as your transfer folder back and forth. Uh, one thing I wanted to also show you is the ability to be able to add it to your desktop. So if you have it here, you can obviously open your website and open it, but there's a button down here to go down to apps, and you can actually uh, add it. You can go in and add your desktop to this. So you can go down here and uh, add uh click on this installed as uh, a site and then you get this sage icon and that that will create this icon that we were showing here on your system so you'll just get that icon right here and that opens it up directly um so that's uh do we have uh uh eric do we have any uh questions where are we at with uh questions I actually Let's have see. one come in. Yeah. The question is, is the login Active Directory integrated for a single sign-on session? So the answer to that is we do not support Azure, the Azure single sign-on right now. So you will get a separate Sage ID and you'll log into that separately. Now, one thing um, I will show you is that we do once you log into the system, uh, it automatically logs you in. So you don't have to log in twice. So once you have your icon, and you can save your icon, uh, save your your uh, thing, but it does not support, uh, at this point, um, Azure uh, Active Directory. So you have to have a separate Sage ID login at this point. Okay. okay. Okay, attendees, any other questions you might have? Tim, I wonder if we want to just show like exporting a, a PDF and yeah, we can do that. Showing, showing how that shows up on your local drive and then moving a file back for you know to show that we can use Visual Integrator to import that. Yeah, so you have um, when you're using Visual Integrator or uh, forwarding. So let's say, for example, I wanted to uh, do a aging so i'm going to go into the system and i'm going to run my my aging report i'm just going to open that up and it's going to open up my aging and when i run it i can do a preview mode just like here oh let me change my date to be get a little data in here actually let me run let me run my accounts payable report here that's not what i want to see i love my demo environment here so when i'm running report when i have a uh when i have that out there i can save it out to my local drive so i can click and export if i were to export something 
out to the system. Uh, this is going to be it's the same air. It's going to give them the ability to save out there. So you're going to be able to see when you save out there, you'll be able to see your drive and you'll be able to save to a file out there on the on your network. So you can either save it to your eDrive and we'll, we'll we put all your paperless up here or you can save it out to your local uh, your local computer and you can save a copy of it out there. Yeah, that was the, the main thing. And then on the on the visual integrator side, using that data drive, we can we can move files over. So let's say you want to import, you know, journal entries or those types of things, we can still do that. Yeah, so so we can definitely if you have like an AP import, you can specify that when you do the import. So uh you can specify either your drive here or uh what happens is you will see your your drive here. If you go down here to the network, you see a TS client. Now everybody will get a TS client drive, and you can you can set these up to be the same drive. So when you go out here and you say, for example, you have something going through this SPC transfer, you can you can have it always set to be that file. So you can whatever you put in that file will automatically import in. So you can have it set to be this. Um, let me open this file up here. Um, when you open up this file, so when you set it uh, to, to have it set here, uh, you can specify this is pull this this order. There it is. It's this all ordered file here, and you can have it set to be that. So when we go to um open that here you can you can um oh, i don't want to do that you can set that to be this client so whenever you save this on the system it will always put it in this folder and it will it will pull it in so you have the ability to be able to pull files off your local system or you can have things saved from your up on the server so you have the capability so it's you kind of get the best of both worlds you have your your data drive on the on the server, and you can also look at all of your local local um, files from your local workstation. You'll see all those mapped. Awesome. We have a couple more questions. If um, so, let me know when you're through this example. Go ahead. Great. So you can continue to share. Um, the question is: We are using an RDS environment now and are having a lot of issues with documents and reports coming up in PDF. Are there any issues there? Um, no, we, we don't really. What happens is we are running in an RDP mode, but we install, um, you can point your browser to different modes in the system. So you probably have some issue with how that mode is set up, but when you, you can it will fully support paperless office so when you uh, print to a paperless office it'll pop up and it'll save a copy of it if you're doing that so we don't really have any any issues with that the only uh, the only thing that we come across once in a while is if you have a lot of printers or you have a slow printers we'll recommend that you get the ts print because that speeds it up by a factor of two or three sometimes and it also gives a couple other items. So if you're running RDP now, I would highly recommend you take a look at a at TS Print. But that you know that's an added option that we we add into a Partner Cloud. Great. Another attendee asks, how does it work for upgrading to new versions? Will we be on the most recent version? So, yeah, so what, of, what the, Go ahead. Go ahead, Gary. I'll, I'll just say yeah, part of when you sign up for Sage Partner Cloud, part of this is to be more like a um, a true cloud platform where you are on the latest version or the the last version um, before the latest version. So the expectation is you're going to be current or one back, and it's really up to the to the partner and the customer to decide how that works. We're with some of our SLAs and hosting agreements, we do have the upgrade built in. It is. It's not like Sage is actually 
doing the upgrade behind the scenes for us. We still have to do an upgrade. Um, but if, if you want to talk more about that, that's probably a conversation where we'd say, where are you now and where do you want to be? And we could, we could basically design an SLA that includes the hosting and includes the upgrade either every year or every other year, depending on how often you do want to upgrade. So. One of one of the nice things that we have with Sage Partner Cloud is so we can we can clone your current environment. And what happens is we will clone your existing machine and we'll put that uh, that version out to a, a data drive, and then we'll be able to migrate it into that your your system. So it's we find that upgrades are easier in SPC. Um, so we've been we've been working on uh, our upgrading our existing customers, getting them onto the current version. Um, usually the new version will come out um, about six months after the release. So our current version right now on Sage Partner Cloud is 2022. And probably by uh, late summer, we're going to start installing 2023. And for our, our, our existing customers, we're, we're in the process of, of getting them up, getting current onto the current version. Any more questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So the an attendee asks, is there better compatibility with using Adobe DC Pro? We've always experienced issues when using Sage to create reports in PDF. Then it would lock the application, which would not allow you to open additional PDFs. The only way to correct the issue was to reboot your local desktop. Yeah, we we haven't really had that many problems. I will tell you that Sage has been in the process. Currently, right now, Sage uses a product called Chillcat to create those PDFs, um, and they've been working hard. As and anybody who's been on Sage has likely had the uh, paperless office issues that we've had, where you have to run your PL advanced options. So. Um, we have found that that is definitely less in this environment. Um, it does, you do every once in a while that does pop up and you can you can run that mode, uh, run that to reset it. But um, we haven't had that many problems with, uh, with uh, the PDF writers on in Partner Cloud. Okay, great. Uh, there's another here that might be hard to answer, but we, we can try. Since you are now making Sage 100 cloud accessible, quote unquote, does that mean Sage has a long-term development plan for 100 other than just maintenance? Well, Sage has done a tremendous amount over the last two years in relating to uh, the work order module. So the production management has been completely rewritten. And uh, this version 2023 that's coming out is a fully new functioning um, uh, work order module production management and uh, they're they're planning to add more features um, you know the roadmap uh, they're talking about being able to add alerts into the system and a lot of cool things so there is a lot of development actually going on in sage 100 for the different modules um, so they're adding new features or they're adding different things throughout the different modules so um, it's a yeah, it's a good I time to just, get get current that's all that it, that's all true. I, if maybe the question is asking, are, are they planning to completely rewrite it as a more of a native cloud solution? And I would say the answer is no on that. So um, it's still, you know, a legacy application that's still being developed and still maintained. Um, but I wouldn't expect to see a like a true native cloud Sage 100 application. Um, this is this is kind of their bridge uh, is to say, oh yeah, we can put it in the cloud. And it works really well. And Sage actually, all, all that stuff that they're doing behind the scenes to, you know, with the Sage ID and the Sage provisioning portal and spinning up the virtual machine, that there's no cost to that to, to you know, to us as the partner or to the customer. So that's all that's all nice value that they're adding pretty much for free. So there is, but there is, <coughs> excuse me, they are definitely adding new new features to Sage. And uh, um, yep. so it's not it's not a, a dead product by any means. Uh, it's you know it's something that uh, people love and use. It's a very mature product that has a lot of capabilities, and a lot of people use it. 
Great. One other one other thing I we didn't talk about during the uh, during our discussion is the, how we how the licenses work. So when we bring Sage over, um, you purchase your licenses for your Sage. So that allows you to specify how many users you want to have in the system at one time. So if you're on a five user system, you can have five users in at one time. Now you can have ten users or twelve users that can all get into it. So a lot of times with some of the other uh, hosting products, you pay per user, you pay per named user. We do not do that in Sage Partner Cloud. So if you have 10 users, you're still only gonna be paying for your five licenses. So Sage 100 Partner Cloud is a little bit more economical than some of the other uh, hosting platforms out there. So it's not based on named users. Um, um, so that's kind of a that's kind of a nice thing. Um, I think it's a little less expensive than some of the other ones out there. Great. Another question asked: Who do we contact to move forward with going from cloud? I'm sorry, forward with going cloud from on premise. Does this require a B2B tunnel on each side's firewall? Required TCP UDP ports? So uh, let me tech, technically um, we are just using port 80 with HTML and um, so all you need to have is the ability to be able to get on the internet. So if you have the ability to get on the internet, you're going to be able to get on Sage Partner Cloud. That's one of the other benefits. You can log into this from anywhere. Um, uh, some people, I have a user that just started saying, hey, we have these these new iPads. Will they, will they work? And yeah, I mean, you, the new iPads work with... Uh, the, the mouse now granted it's not a pc so it's you're not going to have the same functionality but you know be able to put in an order or something like that you can definitely you can definitely do that um so if you have an internet uh, you can get into sage partner cloud now eric maybe you want to answer some of those other uh, the other side of that oh i i think you covered it unless i'm missing something <laughs> yeah so it's no no special no special sauce on this. If you can get out to the internet, you can you can uh, get into Sage 100. And like I said, one of the earlier points is this data security. Um, you know, we are all, um, you know, the data data security is a scary thing right now. And Sage Partner Cloud, being in Azure with the uh, secure backend of uh, Sage ID, allows it to be protected, and it's much more protected than a than an on-site, uh, than your on-prem system. Uh, we're not running Outlook on the server, so you're not really getting those type of files on there. So it's really, it's protected. And the backups every night, you have that security too. So, you know, worst case, we can go back to a prior backup. Um, oh, we also you know, install critical stuff. updates every month too. So that's something I, I don't think we had on the slide. So. The last Saturday evening of, of every month, we install any critical server updates that need to get installed on those virtual machines. So that's just happening, auto, happening automatically too. With this environment, you know, we you know we were kind of getting out of our the COVID world where everybody's working at home. But I'll tell you, um, the ability to be able to access thing access this from anywhere is is wonderful. You know, if you do have uh, you don't have to have a, a local terminal server. You don't have to spend the extra money to get a go to my um, a go to my PC or some license like that. Um, so you can log into it and get all your data right there. So all the paperless office is saved locally. Um, we have the capability to do emailing if you you need to have a, a, a cloud-based email such as SMTP to go or Office 365. So you can email out of the system just like a local one. Um, and uh, we're also uh, looking at being able to add scanning capability too. We we don't have that much need right now, uh, but uh, we that is something that's definitely available for people. If you want to go down that path, we can take a look at that. Great. Another question asks, what's what is the average turnaround to moving to cloud? I would say it's usually um, it's it's usually a, a, a one to two week process, depending on that timing. Uh, you would have to reach out to your account manager, and they can get a get you a, a quote. A lot of times, it'll it'll 
there won't be any additional costs from the SAGE side. We'll put together a statement of work to do the migration and upgrade. And uh, usually, uh, it, it, usually it can be done in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll get the system up, we'll provide your project plan, uh, we'll get all your users logged in, uh, do a pilot just to make sure everybody can get in, do printing, and then we'll uh, refresh the data and you'll go live on it. So it's it's a really easy process. It's a fantastic way to get yourself in the cloud and get protected, um, get get security and backups and all that type of stuff. So um, we can move pretty quickly. It's, yeah, just like I said earlier, very similar to any other upgrade. Um, let's say you were upgrading you know, on-prem from one server to a newer server, it's it's just that process. And the big question is, do we want to do a pilot and do a little testing first? Uh, I think we have had some customers move to SPC where they're pretty simple and we just do it all at once without the, without the pilot first. Um, but yeah, pretty smooth, pretty quick process. So most of the DSC enhancements and most of the third-party uh, are out there. Uh, there are a couple that we haven't tested very much, but um, uh, you know, most of them are supported. We've run Starship, we've run um, um, scanning type things. We've done Avalara, um, Avalara credit card, credit card processing. processing. Yeah, there's a list Beanwork, somewhere. Beanworks is another one. So. Yeah, but Sage Sage does have a list of ISVs that have said they're they're tested and approved for Sage Partner Cloud, and we can try to find that that uh, formal list and get it over to the attendees. Great. Another question asks: Is Sage inaccessible during the last Saturday of the month updates? If so, how just, long just, is it down, yeah, and what hours are typical downtime? I believe it's set to. 11 to 1 central time so 11 p.m to 1 a it's it's in the middle of the night on a saturday um so it's, or late in the morning so it okay. hasn't really impacted any of our 40, 40 clients but if that's an issue we could we could even change that we you, if that's not a good time we could have a different um critical update schedule for a, for a different customer it's not hard to do awesome Okay, another asks, what are the reoccurring monthly costs associated with having the data hosted in SPC? So that's variable based on the number of users, the complexity of the um, implementation. So we would just wanna talk offline and, and see what modules you have, how many users you have, what add-ons you have, and then we can put a quote together for the, for the hosting. Great. So another um, sort of has follow-up, I guess, to their original question about the future of Sage 100. Um, I, let me see if I can phrase this in a question. <laughs> the, we were under the impression that Sage 100 was to be sunsetted sometime to be replaced with Sage Intact. So we've been exploring ERP replacement since we didn't think Sage 100 had a future. What are your thoughts on that? Thanks. We'd love to talk to you about that. I think I think that's a discussion I'd love to be a part of with your account manager and understand what your needs are. Um, Sage 100 or Sage has I don't think they've ever put out anything any type of announcement that they're planning to sunset Sage 100. Um, that that's why they're still making developments. That's why they're heavily promoting Sage Partner Cloud. So it's not it's not going anywhere. Are they investing in Sage 100 like they're investing in Sage Intact? No, <laughs> there's there's going to be a difference there because Sage Intact is is a you know native cloud ERP system and um, it's it's more of a future looking ERP system. So, but they also realize that there's gaps and every Sage 100 customer is not a good fit for Sage Intact and so they're working to fill the gaps and they're also working to continue to improve Sage 100. But those are those are questions we love to have with with clients. Where where do you want to be? Are you looking? You know, is Sage 100 not meeting your needs? And we we definitely have options at DSD. Yep, totally agree. Okay, well, any other questions, attendees? I mean, I think you 
done a great job of interaction. So thank you so much for your time and attention here. Um, you've asked some really insightful uh, questions. By the way, in terms of custom reports and UDFs and all that type of stuff, scripts, when we migrate, we migrate all that over. So if you have a system that has some modified screens or scripts or different things to do that, we will modify those or we will bring the migrate those all over and the, all that data will migrate in. Um, custom reports, we run Crystal just like it does now. Um, you have the capability to um, run Excel if you want to run access, different things. Um, you can run uh, the older version of Knowledge Sync. The, um, the version nine works fine. And uh, so, um, all the most of the capabilities that you currently have in your Sage system will migrate over to the new system. So it's just a matter of just making sure we have all the all the dots, all the T's crossed and the and the I's dotted. Awesome. Okay. Well, if we have no further questions, we can wrap up a bit early here. I um, do. You have any closing thoughts, Eric or Jim? No, just thanks thanks for uh, attending and listening to us. And if you have a, any other questions, feel free to reach out to us or your account manager at DSD. Happy to uh, yeah, I think, uh, more options. I think uh, Sage Partner Cloud is an you know it's a it's an exciting area to be able to uh, get your system secure, protected, backed up, and usability wise, it's just it's a fantastic system. So we've we have a lot of happy customers and a lot of people that. Um, really like that they're they're uh, moved over and they're sitting in the cloud now. Yeah, it's been it's been a little over 2 years now since they released this and we kind of dipped our toe in and we were part of the early um adopter beta program. Um the you know, the first few were very simple customers just trying to make sure everything worked okay, but at, at this point <laughs> we've got the, the the gas pedal down and we we love moving clients to Sage Partner Cloud because because they love it because there's a lot of value and and um, it just seems to be a better solution. So yeah, oh, seems like we got maybe one more question. So actually, we'll we'll go ahead and let everyone go. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us. We really appreciate the time you spent with us. Uh, you will actually get a copy of this recording early next week. And your account manager will be following up to get your thoughts on this new fun environment that you could have um, in in the span of a weekend, I heard Eric say. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> thanks again for joining us. Um, have a great rest of your day. And we'll be in touch soon. Bye, everyone.